the best thing you can do is teach people to write because there's no difference between that and thinking and one of the things that just blows me away about universities is that no one ever tells students why they should write something it's like well you have to do this assignment well why are you writing well you need the grade it's like no you need to learn to think because thinking makes you act effectively in the world. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And those could be battles for good things. If you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. So that's why you learn to write. It's like, well, I can't believe that people aren't just told that. It's, it's, it's like, it's the most powerful weapon you can possibly provide someone with. And I, I mean, I know lots of people who've been staggeringly successful and watched them throughout my life. I mean, those people, you don't want to have an argument with them. They'll just slash you into pieces. And not in a malevolent way. It's like, if you're going to make your point and they're going to make their point, you better have your points organized because otherwise you are going to look like and be an absolute idiot. You are not going to get anywhere. And if you can formulate your arguments coherently, and make a presentation if you can speak to people if you can lay out a proposal god people give you money they give you opportunities you have influence that's what you're at university for and so that's what you do is you that's you're in you're in english right you're and yeah new languages anyways it's like yeah te teach people to be articulate because that's the most dangerous thing you can possibly be so and that's motivating if people know that it's like well why are you learning to write because you're here's your sword here's your m16 right here's your bulletproof vest like you learn how to use them but <sighs> ah it's just it's an endless mystery to me why that isn't made self-evident so that's the sort of thing that can drive you mad trying to sort out it's like people are, there's a, there's a conspiracy to bring people into the education system to make them weaker. So, I guess that keeps the competition down. Maybe that's one way of thinking about it. If your students are stupid, they're not going to challenge you. The reason that you come to university to be educated is because there is nothing more powerful than someone who is articulate and who can think and speak. It's power. And I mean power of the best sort. It's authority and influence and respectability and competence. And so you come to university to craft your highest skill. And your highest skill is to be found in articulated speech. And if you're, if you're, if you're a master at formulating your arguments, you win everything. And better than that, when you win everything, everyone around you wins too. Because to transform yourself into, let's consider, consider your transformation into something approximating the logos. It means you shine a light on the whole world. Well, there's nothing more exciting to do than that. There's nothing better you can possibly do. And to think that you're coming to university to be, you know, trained to have a job, it's like, great, that's a hell of a lot better than being unemployed and covered with Cheeto dust while you're snacking away in front of your video game in the basement. But it's not, it's not a, and I don't have anything against video games, by the way. But it, it, <laughs> but it's hardly a triumphant call to to being in the world and that's what university should be calling forth it's like god you people you you know I, I know what harvard students are like i taught here for five years you people are spectacular you're spectacular you, you're 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 all capable of being world beaters you transform yourself into something that's articulated and sensible and grounded in history and knowledgeable and wise man you can do anything you want and hopefully anything you want for good because if you have any sense, everything you want to do would be for the good. Because there's nothing more compelling or meaningful or, or useful in combating the tragedy of life than to, than to struggle with all your soul on behalf of the good. I did a talk at Harvard four years ago. And... I pointed out two things to the students in the audience. One was that a tremendous amount of civilization and effort had gone into producing the institution that they were now part of, and that everyone who was part of that institution was hoping that they would come there and learn everything they possibly could that was relevant and important, and that they would be the best possible people they could be, and they would go out in the world and 
do as much good as they possibly could. That was the essential mission of the enterprise. And that was really the case. And also that learning to write in particular was going to make them more powerful than they could imagine. And a number of students came up to me afterwards and said, I really wish someone would have said that to us when we first came here. And it's the writing part of that. I, I kind of got obsessed with that when I was working as a professor. And I'm working on a piece of software right now to help, which will launch soon, um, to help people write. Because what I observed in my own career, and, and it's so interesting, the parallelism is so interesting, but not surprising, is that nothing can stop you if you can write. And it's for the reasons you just laid out. It's like, when you write, you make a case for something, whatever it happens to be. And if you make the best case, well, then you win. And you get whatever it is that you're aiming at. And so, you know, you said, maybe that's why I didn't ask you why you went into English, I, I guess. That might have been the reason, is that the utility of learning to write is so self-evident to me that it, it could pass by without question. But it's also interesting to think about how it fits into this, this broader, well, let's say, at least partially military slash strategic way of looking at things. You know, you, you, you describe the intense relationship between marshalling your arguments properly, getting everything in order on the page, and making strategic progress truly in the military sense, that those things are tied together very, very precisely. And it's obviously your ability to communicate as well that's, that's well, look what it's done. You have your podcast, you have your YouTube channel, you have your books, which many of which you self-published. So that ability to communicate is, it's... I just can't understand why it's not presented, especially, not entirely, but especially to adventurous, well, let's say young men. We could say young people. You're adventurous? You want to make a mark? Because you bloody well better learn how to write. Because if you learn how to write, well, then you can think and you can communicate your thoughts. So not only are you deadly strategically, you become extremely convincing. And then you can go and do anything you want and no one will stop you. And that's never told to people, and I, 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 I don't really understand why. You know, you hear the pen is mightier than the sword, which is just a cliche unless it's fleshed out. But the reason, you laid out the reasons perfectly. Yeah. You, and you have to communicate what happened as well as having it had, had it happen. It's upsetting to me, I would say, that young people in particular aren't stringently instructed that the ability to that literacy makes them powerful in every way they can possibly imagine except the absolutely immediate and so it's just sad to me that it's not sold in that manner you want to be weak stay illiterate you want to be strong it's like put yourself together physically fair enough man get brave and street smart but then you could add some literacy to that and you're an unstoppable machine. I love reading for that reason. I could pick my peers too, which I really loved. It's like, well, you know, I have these people around me, but then there's these people who, who've lived before me and in different places and I can set them up on my shelf. I can enter into their world and I can benefit from everything they've thought and saturate myself with that person. It's, and it's very disruptive, especially if the person that you're reading has a mind that's more powerful and more well-developed than your own. I mean, Friedrich Nietzsche spun me around for about three years, and I was reading Jung at the same time intensely, and the same thing, you know, it, it was very disruptive, but unbelievably useful unbelievably useful to try on other people like that and you get the benefit of their entire life distilled into their into their book you know it, it, it's 30 years of work I, I read this one book called the neuropsychology of anxiety which is a it's a great scientific work i think it's the greatest neuropsychological work of the last 50 years it's a very hard book I think it has 1,800 references, something like that. And this guy, Jeffrey Gray, he actually read all those references and he understood them. And so it took me six months to read the book, but I got an entire education out of it. I got to experience in six months what it took him 30 years to learn.
Like what a gift that is. It's 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 unbelievable.
you were like a ton Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I could feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through Got issues in my head I like you in my bed But you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down and I play dead And I stay dead Baby, you'll get sick of being the monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something out of my head Play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing, and my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing, sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dime Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm I could feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string